Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We have another unboxing episode tonight. So I've got three guitars, one accessory, and a couple of other things we might take a look at if we have a little bit of time. But let's start with our first guitar here. So the running theme of the three instruments I purchased were a guy was just selling some guitars. He messaged me and said, hey, are you interested in any of this? He let me know his asking prices and then I threw him an offer and we just made a deal from there. And that's very important. If you're trying to sell something to me, have a price in mind, please. It just makes it a lot easier if we both know what we're kind of expecting here. So right here, we have one of those old HP aluminum cases. It looks like this one still has the plastic on the outside. If you ever take that off, it's very prone to scuffing. I mean, you can see all the scuffs on that. And I do like these cases. They're just ridiculously heavy. So if you're doing some heavy gigging, maybe you might need something this extravagant. But I always love these giant mahogany handles. Those things won't break. But let's take a look at what the first guitar is here. Inside here sleeps another. Blood Moon Les Paul. But here's what's interesting. We've unboxed one other one of these and we also did a review and demo on the Dark Knight version. So this was a Guitar Center exclusive guitar. This one was done, I think almost two years ago. It was the second one of the series that was done up similar to this. It's got the red stain top. Whereas the first one, it's kind of like what you have on the back here is this gray satin on the top. I kind of prefer the first friend myself, but man, this one's got a great tiger striped neck right there. Not a whole lot of movement, but it's because it's kind of a more satin like finish. Had it been a little bit more glossy, I'm sure that would have shown off a little bit better. But that is one of the better necks I've seen on these. So I didn't review that last one because it had the pickups already swapped and because we had already reviewed the gray one. So I don't think I'll review this one either, but I don't know. Now that I've seen it, it is a little bit tempting. I love this reverse chevron top it's kind of got going on here. It's a little bit hard to see the whole flame figuring underneath all this. But it does have a slight V shape going on right there. But honestly, I would say it's more of a plain top because none of this figuring really moves, but it looks super sweet with that dark red and black finish. I mean, if there was one of these to review, uh, it would definitely be this one. But if you want to learn a little bit more about these, you can check out my old review and demo, and you can find this one for sale on my website because unfortunately I've got other guitars that I need to knock out. Otherwise, if this does sit around for a while, I'll definitely review this one because that's a choice example. But it does look like we have the Gibson strap. The Gibson multi-tool and the various other case candy here that these all came with, including our baby photo. But here's where this is different this time when I'm talking about these. So they are brand new $3,000 at Guitar Center, right? These are now out of production. If you go to their website, it says, nope, you can't buy anymore. So if you go to your local Guitar Center, you might still find one in there. But now that both Blood Moon and the Dark Knight run is over, I'm honestly expecting the prices of these to start going up because they're just that cool. Like they've got a whole bunch of nice stuff going on here. From the black hardware to the grayed out inlays, grayed out Gibson logo with the flamed maple necks. These are something people will be looking for, you know, in 20, 30 years. And our truss rod looks good, so I am very happy with this purchase. So that was a pretty good one to start with. Let's see what is in box number two here. That's kind of a common theme for all of these is I might have had them before at one point in time. Most of these are just for resale, but it's always fun to unbox things together, right? Get first impressions. And I had a few people say, hey, why do you wait weeks to open guitars? Doesn't that kind of put you at a liability for like if something does go wrong? Well, A, I have the live unboxing of them, so that kind of protects me there. And some of it, I just assume the risk. But you have to remember, I'm a unique case because I'm a guitar channel, right? So I'm all about documenting first impressions. I have to wait until I'm ready to unbox these, be in the good, happy mood to talk about all of them. Because I don't want to film stuff when I'm not, you know, in the zone, right? Because then the episodes just aren't as fun. And sometimes I have other things that I need to do, like reviews and demos or would you rock or nots. So I try to spice up and make a nice variety of the content. But most carriers give you like 30 plus days to actually report any damage. But I've only ever had a handful of guitars actually get cracks in them. Like small finish checks I can live with, but this one... All right, I might have to review this, but it's it's going to be way out the line because this is one of the RD reissues. So looking at this thing, it's actually pretty darn clean, right? Now we do have some sticker residue right here. He said he never noticed one of his kids put a sticker on. It looks like some sort of a shield, but that'll come off with a little bit of goo gone. You might always have like a sticker shadow right there, but this thing is looking pretty clean otherwise. Not too many nicks or dings. 
I mean, heck, for a 2010, I mean, that's really good. Now, it's not the Guitar of the Week reissue, unfortunately, which is something I would like to do, have a complete Guitar of the Week, Guitar of the Month collection for, like, the future museum, but I don't know about this one. I, I might have to review it because I don't get these RD reissues too often. So if you're not familiar with the RD, in the mid-70s, I believe it's 1977, these things first came out. There was the RD Standard, the RD Custom, and the RD Artist that had the active Moog electronics. It's kind of like a Firebird, but not neck through. It has some like Explorer-like attributes to it as well. RD stands for Research and Development. They were just kind of trying something new. I know Fluff on YouTube likes these things. That was kind of his uh, claim to fame signature guitar stuff. And the earlier ones actually have Fender scale length, 25 and a half, whereas the later ones were 24 and three quarters. So hey, if you're looking for a longer scale Gibson guitar, maybe find yourself one of the original ones. I don't have my tape measure right now, so <laughs> we'll wait for the review and demo to figure out what they did here. But it looks like this one has some nice case candy to it as well. All the original stuff. I gotta say, another one I'm happy with. Sometimes when I buy used guitars, they're like all oh, really dirty, dusty. This one needs some new strings and a little bit of TLC to the fretboard and a light cleaning, but this is very, very mild. It looks like our truss rod's good on that one too, so fantastic. Nothing makes me happier than unboxing guitars that are exactly as described. There's no hidden demons that I find later on. Unboxing guitars can be kind of stressful at some times. So we're going to take a break from guitars. This is not a guitar, but it's in the guitar shape package. I got it from Canada. This is one of those items. When you see one in good condition, even if you don't need it, I suggest buying it. And what item is that in here that I have a huge collection of already and I don't really need this? It's a Gen 2 chainsaw case. So it looks like uh, maybe it needs a light cleaning, but that is looking nice so far. Finding these things in clean collector grade condition, which sounds strange to say for a case, but these are the best Gibson cases that have ever been made. I prefer Gen 1 and 2. If you need to learn the differences, you can check out this video, but the gist of it is either two latches or three latches. And then Gen 3, they introduced the metal latches, and that's a much big, clunkier case, which I just happen to have one right here. I mean, this is made of a completely different material, too. That's like a molded plastic, whereas this is something called Asdel. Still a plastic material, but way more dense. Nothing against Gen 3s, but it's always Gen 2s for me. So these latches, they're perfect, nice and tight. And watch this, it still has the lid ribbon. Whenever I see one, nice shape with the lid ribbon, I just buy it. Because people are always looking for nice clean ones because these are the cases that burst owners used to protect their really expensive investment. And what makes this one even better is it has the case candy, the just in case hang tag. You've got the Gibson case warranty manual. So that means this was like a replacement case that somebody just bought separately. Not all of these would have that. It would have to be something that they just purchased. Like nowadays you can buy a brand new Gibson case for 200 bucks. I mean, it was probably something similar to that, but none of that got filled out. And this is really rare. Like I've seen them sell for like 150 bucks before just because you don't find these too often. And they're just kind of cool collectible things. The protector case. So that's another one for my, I don't know, private collection. I mean, if somebody wanted to pay me silly money for it, okay, I might sell it. Because I do have one or two other ones that are just as nice as these, but the values just keep going up. It's not that hard to have a case laying around. When you need one, you can't find them. So that's why if there's ever a nice clean one, I pick them up. I mean, man, the, the handle even is perfect. I mean, just a little bit of wear right here. But I swear, if Gibson does not reissue this style of chainsaw case, I will. Because I'm very passionate about cases and I love those things. Plastic latches and all. But now we have our last guitar of this unboxing episode. It's another good one. We've seen it. It's not a regular guitar. It's got an extended scale length. It is the color white. However, is there any red on it? I guess we'll just have to get it out and see. Nope, doesn't look like a Les Paul to me. <laughs> I faked you guys out on the bucket heads. 
Which, by the way, I still am looking for an absolute mint condition bucket head, Last Paul, if anybody knows of any. I've had a few people send me, like, the ones that show up on Reverb. It's all yellowed, it's got the finish cracking. It's like, nah, I'll pay 10 grand for mint, but I, I don't think the player's grade examples are worth quite that much. Like, I don't even want one that's yellowed hardly any, and that's going to be tricky to find, but I'll pay up for that thing. But inside here sleeps another SG Baritone, but this one in very clean shape. <sighs> Tempted. Tempted to keep this one. I mean, it's got a little bit of yellowing to it. Looks like we're missing one screw on our truss rod cover, but that's not a big deal. But yeah, look at this. Pure white SG goodness. The only thing that would have made these things even better is if the fretboards could have also been like a white fenolic material, kind of like the Snow Falcons. But this one, I can see like maybe a few stray scratches right here. You can actually see a seam line of the body showing through. But the pickups are original. There's no heavy belt buckle rash. This one's very clean. And since bucket heads are getting very expensive lately, people have been looking at these as a nice alternative. And you can check out my review and demo if you want to learn more about this particular model. But basically, yeah, they are a very similar guitar. It's just, you know, Les Paul versus SG. 27 inch baritone scale length. We've got a little bit of a line forming right here because of that's just where the fretboard ends and the neck begins. So that's not a big deal. And yes, we do have coil splitting on this one. That's a nice example. Three out of three. Congratulations, seller. You're one of the good sellers out there. Thank you. He was even nice enough to give me fresh strings since he didn't want to bother changing them. And this one also has the nice case candy with it. I do notice that this case is actually not the best fit despite being the original one like it's like it needed a little bit more padding right here all right three awesome guitars cool case we got a little bit of mail time here these have been sitting for a while they needed to get opened so this uh i, I buy a lot from musician's friend and sweetwater and a whole bunch of other ones but musician's friend way of saying hey thank you for buying all these guitars they sent me some strings which you know, I go through a lot of guitars, I change a lot of strings. That's cool that uh, Diodario sells 10 packs. Because I normally buy the 25 pack, it comes in like a big box. But lately they changed how they do it. It's no longer in like individual containers. They just group all the strings together. I don't like that as much. For well, this one, we get 10 sets individually wrapped like this. So thank you, musician's friend. I'll get some good use out of that. Next up here, let's see what we got. We've got a letter. It says, here are the trading cards I emailed you about. I look forward to seeing the video. I also threw in a pen that looks pretty cool. He says he likes Gibson so much he named his cat Gibson. So let's see what Dave has sent me here. Now I'll be honest, I forget the story behind this, but he stumbled upon some of these old, like late 90s Gibson trading cards. And the fact that it's still sealed makes me not want to open it. But he thought they would go good in just my collection or my museum. And oh my goodness, thank you, man. I forget what episode it was we talked about these Gibson collector pens. This is the Triple Pickup Flying V. I believe the Faded series one. That's actually really cool. If I remember correctly, I think there's like 12 different pens. You gotta collect them all. As far as durability goes, it feels like if you play around with this too much, it might break up here. But those Flying V Fadeds were very shortly lived. Yeah, that's right. It's got the little chicken head knob there. So that's what this is. I wonder why they decided to put that on the pen, but you also have that printed on here. So, hey, that's really cool. I'm going to be keeping that one around. And then these, I think I'll, I'll just save them for another episode. Are you guys interested in checking out all of these cards? Because it doesn't really do me any good to leave these things sealed. I'd rather see every single model there. So if that is something you guys are interested in checking out, we can go ahead and do that. Or I guess I could write an article on my website about these and just like take scans of each of these because these are looking cool. So we'll see this 50 card list another time, I think. But I think this one right here, we'll save that for the next unboxing episode because that's got a lot of stuff we need to talk about. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.